Stanford University. Okay, so um, I am not Ann Arvin. Uh, Ann had to leave this morning on a family um, emergency that she had to deal with, and so I will close us here with just a few remarks. First of all, thanks to all six of our fantastic speakers today. I think this uh, symposium really captured what SNI is about in the sense of uh, the breadth of topics that we have to consider with the nervous system and that, and that the nervous system is important for. I mean, Connie's talk made the, the point beautifully today that the molecular revolution in neuroscience tools is nowhere close to stopping. Uh, if anything, it's gathering momentum. As we went from calcium sensors to optogenetics to CRISPR-Cas9 manipulations and now to these new uh, GFP manipulations that have increased our numbers of cell lines available, not cell lines, animal lines, mouse lines available that we can manipulate by a factor of 10. It's astounding what we saw from Connie today. It's amazing. And similarly, Mark Schnitzer's talk, I mean, I remember when Mark came to Stanford. Is Mark still here? It was, I don't know, 12 years ago or 13, 14 years ago. How long ago was it, Mark? 13 years. So I remember when Mark, Mark came and he was into these little endoscopes and trying to visualize neurons and, you know, with early calcium uh, reporters. And Mark's lab has labored in the vineyard for so many years, really honing these tools. And much of what we saw from his data today, from the hippocampus and the amygdala, are really the fruits of that huge intellectual and time investment. And being able to see these population dynamics in the hippocampus, being able to see how stable ensembles are created out of statistically transient components, that was a really beautiful story. And, and we could also see from Mark's talk that the, the tools themselves are continuing to develop at that circuit level as well. So these are, you know, these are, these are really significant advances. Um, Keith Humphreys took us into you know, the policy realm, which is way out of uh, the comfort zone of most people in this room, but he clearly was rooting it in, in neuroscience, and I think that's a very important development for people like Keith who are involved and have a major voice in policy. Like a practice professional, you notice he didn't really tell us uh, how he was going to vote or how we should vote on that marijuana initiative coming up on November 8th. He just tried to make it clear to us you know, what the stakes were and what some guiding principles were. But I really appreciated that kind of talk. I mean, Tony, I'm a huge admirer of Tony Wiscori's uh, work. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's excitement and its potential is self-evident to everyone in the room. Uh, how far we can push this, how rapidly, because as Tom said, uh, all of our clocks are ticking. And <laughs> anything that can help maintain brain health during an aging process across the lifespan or promises to do that, we want to know those molecular factors as soon as we can. Uh, Helen, Helen is, you know, I have so much respect for Helen because Helen Bronte Stewart goes to the clinic every day and deals with real people with real diseases. And she's trying to bring science to do something about those diseases, and that just, that just has my ultimate respect. Uh, it's slow because the pace of FDA approval of devices and turnaround to get new devices and new techniques into the human brain is, is glacial and requires hundreds of millions of dollars of investment, and there's this kind of valley of death and translation that a, m a bunch of us are familiar with. But, but Helen is, is sticking to that, and she's blazing a trail across that valley and coming out with really good results on the other side. And finally, Tom is tackling some of the most difficult problems. Uh, you know, it, it, with the technical revolutions that we have and the data that we're going to be able to acquire, uh, what are the data sets that are most critical to understanding the foundational principles of how the nervous system works and how can artificial systems shed light on that, how can biological systems shed light on artificial systems. I once heard um, uh, McLaughlin, Bob McLaughlin, who some of you have heard me tell the story, who's a Nobel Prize physicist here at Stanford, is a theorist actually, one that shared the Nobel Prize for superconducting, work on superconducting, early work on superconductors. And he talked to a bunch of us neuroscientists in the early gush of enthusiasm at an NSF meeting about the brain initiative. And he said, you know, about all these new techniques and all these, you know, petabytes and exabytes of data we were going to get, he said, be careful what you wish for. At the end of 10 years, you may have disks and disks full of data and simply be 10 years older. Uh, 
And that is the problem that Tom is trying to address and that many people in this room in computation and theory are trying to address. You know, what do we actually do in an intelligent way with data sets that complex where human intuition is certainly going to fail? Uh, and what, what principles and what te techniques can we use to guide us through? So I think we've visited all of these areas today. And that doesn't exhaust what's going on in, in contemporary neuroscience, but we're planning another symposium next year. And we'll, 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 we'll go along with that. And finally, I just want to mention the Sammy Quo winners. Um, you know, we get wonderful speakers in these symposiums. Uh, they're inspiring people who've put decades of their lives into trying to do something significant. Uh, but all of us who speak in symposia like this know that, you know, a lot of, uh, most of the work and a lot of the real intellectual inspiration is, is done by students and postdocs in our labs. And I think our Quo Awards uh, award winners today were a sterling bunch and that really highlights uh, how much we appreciate the, the work that, that is, is done by the people who will create the future of this field. So we're going to close the symposium now. We will have some wine and finger foods and great intellectual foods and posters uh, at the, on the lawn downstairs. And fortunately, this is today and not tomorrow because tomorrow it would be raining at this time. Uh, but it's a lovely day for socializing and, and seeing some of these posters. And Tanya, any, any, oh, I, I have some thanks that I need to give. Please bear with me one more moment where, uh, I don't want all those supplementary slides. There we go. So um, I, I really want to thank the SNI staff, the Neurosciences Institute staff. So um, Tanya Rashke is a member of the executive committee, but she is the, as most of you know, our associate director for operations. And she works tightly with the uh, SNI staff. And m many of you have gotten emails from some of these people who work tirelessly on our behalf. Rula, El Asmar, Kathy Lau, Taylor Miller. Uh, Amy Adams has been hugely important. She's in communications, has actually been promoted to a new place in communications, and we've kind of uh, lost her, but uh, she's looking out for us. And Amy has written some beautiful stories and done some beautiful social media things on behalf of you and SNI over the last few years, and, and we're glad she's staying at Stanford. Those last two names there, Mara McGinnity and Patrick Guttridge, are our, our colleagues in the Office of Development who are working very hard on fundraising for uh, the building, for the Big Ideas program, for our postdoctoral fellowships, for everything that we're able to do, and we wouldn't be able to do much of any of it without them. Uh, others who helped today, you can see their names down below. I won't, I won't go through them one at a time. Uh, but uh, Susan Matthews was, was particularly helpful in putting together a lot of the details. And of course, my uh, executive committee up there. So um, with that, uh, I will close the official proceedings and meet you down on the lawn for refreshments and, and posters. Thank you very much. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.